some way to work out every situation that we uh that we're faced with. Amen. So uh, I truly thank Yahweh for that uh for the uh rod I was able to make with uh with our apostle. Amen. I thank Yahweh for uh uh his many trials, the many trials and tribulations that I go through. I thank yeah. him for my family, my mom, my father. Uh, thank him for the uh, wonderful family that he's blessed me with, uh, my wife, my daughter, my son. Yeah. And I think, like I said, I thank y'all for my trials and tribulations because if it wasn't for them, yeah. I wouldn't be the man that you see standing up here today. Amen. Right. Right. I, uh, as y'all can see, every, you know, just about everyone knows my condition. And as y'all can see that uh, today I have my daughter with me. Amen. And I thank y'all for that. Amen. And uh, yes. uh, before uh, we had a... Uh, uh, I guess uh, like a Zoom meeting uh, w uh, with the court uh, that week before I ch uh, chose to go into concentration. Amen. And uh, during that concentration, uh, I, w I read, uh, what was it, uh, Esther. I watched the movie Esther, then I read, and I, I read the book of Esther. Amen. And when, when uh, Haman had went to the king to uh, to ha uh, have all the Jews executed and uh, plundered their goods, yes. uh, Mordecai had went to Esther, and Esther told uh, Mordecai that she was gonna that her and uh, all Mordecai and all their people uh, need to go on a uh, fast, fast, fast without uh, eating or drinking for uh, three days straight, yes. and um, and praying and offered their supplications unto Yahweh Hallelujah. before she before she went to the king. So that's exactly what I did yeah. before before we uh, I had that hearing. Amen. That week before I fasted, um, I didn't eat, uh, I didn't drink. If I uh, I work, I have a labor intensive job. So if I did drink anything, it was water. Amen. And um, uh, I didn't. I went uh, about I went four days without eating, just completely giving myself and my mind over to Yahweh, Hallelujah. praying. Meditating, listening to the word, or uh, watching biblical movies, watching uh, the chosen, just Amen. completely giving my 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 whole my whole self over unto Yahweh. Yes. Amen. And when that day came, uh, I I prayed and I I said Yahweh, please go before me, and whatever you, whatever your will allow it to be done. Amen. And uh, it 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 was when the when the Jew, when uh, Esther went to the king, uh, they, she said the uh, the king ordered that the uh, ordered the uh, Haman to be executed. So that right there was a small victory, but it was but since it was a decree of the king that it it can't be it was a royal decree, so it couldn't be unwritten. So they still had a battle to face, but they was able to arm themselves. So I got this. I got this small, this small victory allowing me to be able to be with my daughter, but there's still a fight that needs to be fought, and that, and I, so I got one down. There's two more to go, Amen. so I still, uh, I still need to uh, continue to give myself over unto Yahweh and uh, concentrate myself, because right now, I'm, right now, as it stands, I'm the only hope for my family, for, uh, for, in order for them to make it back. And that and and that's a, a burden that I'm happily and gladly and willing to take. Amen. So I truly, I truly, truly thank Yahweh for that. But I'm not going to prolong the time. Hallelujah. I'd like to call everyone's attention to Philippians three and thirteen. Hallelujah. And uh, when you get, you can, uh, go ahead and read, Brother Michael. Philippians 3 and 13. Mm -hmm. For it is written, Yes. Brethren, mm -hmm. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. Amen. I come, as I always say, and I say this mostly to remember to humble myself, to keep myself humbled. Yes. I come to you today as Deacon Davion Jenkins. Amen. I don't count myself to be anything greater 
I don't count myself to be above Apostle Washington, any other apostles, any of any of the men in the fivefold, not even the pastors or the teachers. Right. I come to you as humble as I know how. I come, I, I just, I come to you to give. I'm not come. To, I'm not coming to you today to give you a revelation that I, uh, that was revealed unto me last night. All I, all I come to you to do is to remind you of the goodness of Yahweh and remind you of the way that we should be walking and the way that we should be conducting ourselves. Amen. Go ahead. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. That's right. Of Yahweh and Yeshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. Yes. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, Yahweh shall reveal even this unto you. Amen. Go ahead. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. That's right. Let us mind the same thing. That's right. Brethren, mm -hmm. be followers together of me, mm -hmm. and mark them which walk so as ye have us, for an example. Amen. Just like I said, I come to you as Deacon Davion Jenkins. Yeah. So these words I have for you is the words that I've gotten, uh, that I've gotten from the teaching over the years. Amen. I've gotten from the teaching of our Apostle Washington. Hallelujah. And it's important, saints, that we should live by example. Right. It's easy to get up here and uh, sing a song and uh, testify it's easy, and, and talk about what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and who you want to be like and who you, uh, who you, uh, who's your example in the church. It's easy to get up here and stand and preach and talk to y'all and uh, as, a, as, a, uh, as a reader read the scriptures to just open up the scriptures. But not giving any type of example of, the, of, of how I'm applying the scriptures to my life. Uh, all, at, at that point, all I'm doing is just giving you uh, good words and fair speech. What I'm saying is right, but, uh, but at the end of the day, you that are out there are wondering amongst yourselves, is, is what I'm doing, is, is that right? So, but the, I'm, I'm giving you good words, but y'all want, but but want to know, well, are you doing it? So I, and I stand, I stand before you today to say that I am doing everything that I have been called to do. I'm doing everything that I have been, that I have been instructed to do by the counsel that I received from the Most High. Amen. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not standing, I'm not standing up here telling you, husbands, love your wives. And then, uh, and concerning my condition, I'm on the phone cussing my wife out. No, I'm, I'm doing the very thing that I have been instructed to do. Amen. And it's, and it's important, especially when we speak. Uh, when we when we get up here and speak, like I said, we lead by example. Yeah. You can say all day how you want to be like Mother Karen. You can say all day how you want to be like Apostle Washington. But when that Mother Karen size trial come up, what are you doing? When that Apostle Washington size trial come up, what are you doing? We they they've set the example when uh, when it came uh, when it came down to every 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 single thing in their life they have set the example. They're they. You heard you have a, you uh, have heard Apostle Washington stand up here and say how he's given up all rights to himself. Amen. You still trying to detain those rights. Amen. You still trying to hold fast to those rights. Amen. You stand up. You hear a, you stand up here and hear Apostle Washington how he talk about talking about how he loved his wife and everything that he does for his wife. Yeah. But you still wrestling with the uh, with adultery. Yeah. You still struggling with uh, whether or not you want whether or not you want to talk to a woman or whether or not you want to uh, uh, while your wife is away. Get on your phone and look up, uh, look up uh, 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 secret videos and stuff like that. We, we say we say how we want to be like these people, but are you, bro? How are you living? Uh, when these trials come, how are you living? How are you walking? We even, we even see how uh, 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 Apostle Washington, Sister Kim, when it came down to their children, whether they was in church or out of church, how they conducted themselves. I t I tell you right now, when it came down concerning my brother, my. Uh, when uh, me and my wife were staying with my parents, my brother was there too. He did not want to be a, he, he took, he's a, uh, he works for, a, uh, uh, he's an EMT. He took every single shift that he could take in order to not be in his, be in my mom and dad's house because of the light they showed, because of the standard that they lifted up. Amen. He took every single, every single shift that he could take. Even now, when it, when it comes, when it comes, when it uh, comes to my brother, I don't let, I don't let I don't let this get me in trouble. I don't let that flesh get me in trouble. Amen. I, 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 I spoke to the last time I spoke to the people. You see, uh, you uh, parents that claim you love your children, but when you see, you, uh, especially those children that have backslid, but when you see them, your heart just melts, and you just can't help, you just can't help but to think how you how you love them. And you uh, you're not thinking about you're not thinking sober minded about how they, how about how 
they're out there conducting themselves and do, uh, walking any kind of way. You just think about that look, that so-called love that you have for your children. It's not true love. That's that worldly love. Amen. Like, uh, like a, uh, uh, Pat Schroeder always say, it's devilish and sensual. That's Amen. that worldly love. That if, if you if you had that true love, like you say you like you say you do, you'll be reminding them every time every time you talk to them. You know you need to be in church. Uh, we have church tomorrow. You coming? You uh 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 uh. And, or when when they tell you about something that's going on in life, you know that's Yahweh, right? Uh, when I talk to my brother, I always tell him. He tell me about something that's going on in his life. I say, you know that's Yahweh, right? That means that that's a sign for you to come back to church. Man, I'm, hey, man, I don't want to hear that. I'm, I'm just, I say, I'm, look, I'm just telling you. I say, if I don't tell you, then I'm the one that's wrong. I say, you, you, I say, you know the way. You used to be in church. So I, I told him, I tell him, I say, I'm just reminding you. So, but, but like I said, we say we love our children. We say, we, husbands, you say you love your wives. Wives, you say you love your husband, but how are you truly living? Y'all, y'all know my testimony. Y'all know, y'all know what I, uh, uh, what I've uh, said concerning my condition. I told y'all, I, I got that same testimony as uh, 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 Prophet uh, uh, Apostle Stanford and Apostle Washington concerning my condition. I do, I do not uh, look up any any type of. Uh, uh, nudity on my phone. You're not gonna find no dirty pictures. You're not gonna find a text message from uh, uh, Kate. You're not gonna find a text message from Barbara. You're not gonna find a text message from Melissa. You're not gonna find no text message from uh, uh, Ask Justine. Justine, Sister Justine used my phone last Sunday. When she asked for it, I just say, "Oh, uh, hold up, Sister. Let me uh, uh, just give me one second. I I happily gave it to you, didn't I? And when she went to my text messages. And I don't. Uh, if she was paying attention, the last text message she would have saw was a text was a text message that I sent to my wife. So I I, I got I stand up to here today and I tell you I ain't got nothing to hide. Amen. Now, I I, I, I tell y'all every, I love my wife. I, I don't I don't I, I'm not committing adultery. I'm not when I when I go out of town. Uh, I'm not uh, picking up no lot lizards. Having them come to my hotel. Having them uh, come uh, come uh, come into my truck. I told, I'm not doing any of that. This is the, this is the love that I'm showing for my wife, and she's not in church. So Amen. what are you doing? You got your wife. I'm at, This is a serious question. What you have your wife in the church? What are you doing? Oh, you still wrestling with that trial of adultery? You still looking at um, you still looking at other women? You still looking at pictures of women's butts and stuff like that? You still looking at pictures of men, naked men? Because it, it's not just men that be uh, that have this trial with adultery. It's the women too. You still you still looking up dirty videos sitting in the corner, uh, on your phone, just look, look, looking up all kinds of stuff. Amen. Well, 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 what type of life are you living? And you know, and and. and just about, we, it's a small church, so we just about all of us know the type of trials that we all go through. And if you were overcoming that trial and you was doing what is right to do, you will stand up here and you will speak about it and testify about it. You will you'll stand up here and speak about it and testify about it. You parents, if you're really doing what you're supposed to be doing with your children that are not in church, you'll be standing up here and testifying about it. You'll be standing up here and speaking about it. Y'all, I, I promise you, you ain't got to send your child a no long text message about how, what you believe. They'll know what you believe by the light you show. They'll Amen. know what you believe by the way you walk. They'll know what you believe by how you conduct yourself. But if you're standing up here and you're, and you're telling the saints, saints, we got to do what's right. We got we to gotta fight and do what's right. And then when you, go, when you walk out these doors, you conduct yourself otherwise in your household. Oh, I'm, I promise you, they don't believe you. They don't think you're as holy as you think you are. I promise you that. Hallelujah. You know, you know, uh, when... Pastor Washington, I always say, if anyone knows us, it's gonna be our it's gonna be our husbands, our wives, and our children. And I pray, and I, 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 my, my wife know my wife know the life that I live. That's why she don't want to talk to me. And I don't. Hey, if if that if that if that's how it's gonna be, then so be it. But we but it's easy to stand up here and say what you uh what we what what we uh, what we gonna do and how we want to be. It's either to tell the people what they need to do and how they should be, but what type of life are you living? I love I love listening to uh, Pastor Riddle because every time he speaks, he talks about he he don't say I'm saying I'm trying to love my wife. I tell you, I'm still I'm I stand before you today. If you're trying, you ain't doing. That's that's the new motto. If you're trying, you ain't doing. 
you don't hear you don't hear Pastor Washington uh, talk about how me and my wife are trying not to argue no more. Uh, I'm trying to love my wife. I'm trying to be strong for the saints. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep my mind on Mexico and be strong for them. No, he tells you what he's doing, not what he's trying to do. Today, I'm telling you what I'm doing. I'm not saying I'm trying not to commit adultery. Somebody that speak like that is eventually going to commit adultery. Amen. A wife that's, that says, I'm trying to reverence my husband. Somebody that speaks like that, you're not reverencing your husband. A husband that say, I'm trying, not to, uh, I'm, try, uh, I'm trying not to be bitter with my wife. A husband that speaks like that, you've been bitter with, with, uh, with your wife. So if you're saying you're trying, I'll tell you, I'm, if you're saying you're trying, you're not doing. I'm telling you that right now. Amen. You, you, don't, you, you don't talk about the things you're trying. If you're doing it, you don't talk about how you're trying to do it. You talk about what you're doing, and you speak with boldness. You speak with boldness about it. Just how I stand up here and speak with boldness about what I'm doing. But what I'm doing, I told you all today I come to you all as uh, just Deacon Davion Jenkins, but I do, but I do remember the word, and the word says, "Despise not, don't let no man despise thy you." Yeah. So I, I'm standing, I'm standing before you today to give you the words that Yahweh has given, given unto me. Yeah. Hey, if you choose not to, if you choose not to believe me because I'm not a part of the fivefold, then so be it. But the words that I'm saying are true, and you know, and y'all want, and you want to know how I know they're true because I'm, I'm giving y'all examples of how I'm living by them. I'm giving y'all example. I'm being like that, uh, like it says right here. I'm being, an, I'm being an example of how about what I'm doing. Yeah. And like I said, I'm doing this stuff, and my wife died in church. What are you doing? What, 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 what do you got to speak of? What do you got to speak on? Amen. And, and I'm uh, wives too. You, you, you sitting up here with your spouse in church, and you still can't love them. What's wrong with you? What you Yahweh, Yahweh has given you somebody when you was out there by yourself all alone. And you, now, now you got somebody, now you don't want to do what's right. And say, Satan filling these things up in your head, talking about if you, had, if, you had, if you was married to this sister, then this wouldn't be going on. If you was married to this brother, then this wouldn't be, this wouldn't be happening in my life. What's wrong with you? you, 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 you you've heard the words. Amen. You've been here long enough. You've been, you, you, you have that I uh, uh, teach you again. You, you've been here long enough. You, don't, you, you know what to do by now. You know how you should conduct yourselves. Uh, how, how, we, how, uh, you, how you should be on the job. You know how you should co conduct yourself becoming of a saint, but you choose to do otherwise. Amen. Woo, woo, woo. Read. Amen. Go ahead. Brethren, be fathers together of me, mm -hmm. and mark them which walk so also ye have us for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told, told you often, uh -huh. and now tell you even weeping. That's right. That they are the enemies of the cross of the Messiah, uh -huh. whose end is destruction, uh -huh. whose God is their belly, that's right, and whose glory is in their shame. That's right, dude. People that people that conduct themselves, the conduct themselves, you saints that conduct yourselves, uh, according to verse nineteen, you are enemies of Yahweh. Amen. I, right. We are the chosen people of Yahweh. We are the chosen people of the infallible true church of Yahshua, the Messiah, of the apostolic faith. We're not that church right there across the street. We, you, you have bishops stand up and tell you uh, 600, 600, there's 601 churches in, uh, in Lubbock, and only one of them's right. But they don't act like it's right. You have saints that stand up here and testify there are 601 churches in, Lub in Lubbock, but only one of them right. But they don't act like it's right. Amen. You walk out these doors and you conduct yourself like the other 600 church, like the other members of the, six, of the, the other 600 churches. Amen. What type of life are you living? Amen. And when you're talking about their belly is their God, that all, all you that's just giving over to any, the, any lustful desire that you see fit. Just because, just because the, we're not, y'all do saints, y'all do understand we're not prisoners of the flesh. We, we, we don't owe this flesh anything. We're not, de uh, we're not uh, debtors to the flesh. We don't owe this flesh nothing. So any, any desire that comes upon you, any lust that comes upon you, you don't have to give in to it. Amen. But you choose to. You want to know why you choose to? Because you're not reading. You're not fasting. You're not praying. You're not meditating. You're not fellowshipping. You still got out against your brother. So that, that prevents you from fellowship. You still got a problem with this sister. You still got a problem with that brother. You, you, you allow you, your kids have to have a problem amongst each other. That, then that, then that, uh, that, that's, that divides family because, what, because now you're listening to what your kids told you. Right. Not, 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 taking, not taking matters soberly. Amen. 
Yeah. Not saying, well, what did, well, did you do the right thing? Well, what did you do when they did this? If this happened, what did you do? Not, not, not going to go talk to the other parent about what your kids told so y'all can uh, come together and uh, and uh, put this stuff uh, right. put this stuff underfoot. No, you, 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 your child says something. Now you believe them. Now you got a problem with that family. Uh, you, you, we yeah. saints, we shouldn't be conducting ourselves like right. this. We, Romans eight. We are, we are saints. Hold up. We are saints of the Most High. Every single thing we do should be led by the Spirit. Right. Every Amen. every walk we take, every step we make, every word we speak should be led by the Spirit. It shouldn't be led by what you feel in your heart. It shouldn't be led by how, uh, what you what you think. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be led uh, led by uh, your lust. Everything we every single thing we do needs to be led by the Spirit. Amen. But some of you ain't some of you ain't doing that. How so, Deacon? Because I'm preaching these things right now. It's, 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 it's the spirit that's telling me these things that some of y'all not doing this stuff. No, I, I, I didn't. When I, when I told that I was coming down here, I didn't, I didn't uh, sit down in a bit, uh, in an office in Arlington and say, so who's been doing what? And, t and, and take notes about uh, who's been doing this and who's been doing that. I can't, all I did was ask Apostle Washington, uh, well, uh, what should I, what, what, what should I, what scripture should I uh, go to? He said, just preach the word that you preached in, uh, last time he was in uh, Arlington. And what I did was I just went back, read my Bible, and just meditated on what I needed to say. I promise. I, 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 you, I, you can, if y'all want to come back to the hotel room and look in, and look and see if I took down any notes or anything, or if y'all want to call up a couple bishops and ask them, did you tell him what it? No. If, hey, if y'all want to do that, by all means, go ahead. I promise you, you're not gonna find nothing. Amen. The words, I'm, like I said, these words I'm giving to you are the words of Yahweh. I'm coming to you in the spirit of Elihu. When he, uh, uh, when he uh, spoke to Job and his friends. I'm a young man telling you of the ways of Yahweh. I'm a young man reminding your saints how you should be and how you should be conducting yourself. Amen. Whether Apostle Washington is here or not. Actually, even more so when he's not here, you should be co conducting yourself more accordingly. This man, Apostle Washington got enough to worry about when he goes to Mexico. Amen. And before he even got on the plane, he's getting phone calls about what's going on and uh, things, that is ha things that are happening. Yeah. Well, come on, saints. We should know what we should be doing by now. Amen. We should know how we should be conducting ourselves. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Okay. You want me to just read that scripture? Yeah, you can read 18 again. Oh, okay. For many walk, of mm -hmm. whom I have told you often. That's right. And I'll tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of the Messiah, mm -hmm. whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. Yeah. Whose glory is in their shame. Mm -hmm. Who mind earthly things. Yeah. For our conversation is in heaven. That's right. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Yeshua Messiah. Mm -hmm. Who shall change our vile body. That's right. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Uh -huh. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. He's able to, to subdue all things. You know, that includes you. If you allow these words, the, these words that are spoken, if you allow them to reside in your heart, he can, the, that change is going to start from the inside. And it's going to start from the inside, inside and then project outwardly. Ooh, 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 ooh. We look at Apostle Washington and we say, Yahweh's, Yahweh's with that man. Well, that's because he's allowed, he, allowed, he allowed Yahweh to reside in him. Amen. You've, seen people, you've seen people that have backslided and you said Satan's all over there. That's because they allow Satan to dwell in their temple. But if you're if you a true saint, saint of God, a true child of the Most High, you allow Yahweh to dwell in your body. And you allow him to change you. You allow him to make you a new person. No, no, longer, no longer that old man that you used to be. So, so that means that you shouldn't still be coming in here without a song. You still shouldn't be coming here without a testimony. Amen. And you still shouldn't be uh, 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 com uh, coming up here, li uh, uh, coming in here, living a, a fake life. We, we, uh, we hear the scriptures always say, we all right now, we all look holy. We got on our modest apparel, but that don't mean that that don't make all of us right. Amen. Uh, it, we we have all our modest apparel, but some. Some of us allowed Satan to dwell in our temple. Not, not the spirit of Yahweh, but Satan. You allow him to dwell in your temple. And, and saints, when, when we give testimonies, we have to make sure we give them testimonies the right way, the testimonies of victory, testimonies about how you're overcoming, not, not testimonies about what you went through and then 
But amen, continue to pray for me and my family, and uh, they will continue to go stronger. And, uh, I, I, I'm scared to pray for you because I don't know if, if I pray that you continue to go stronger in this way. I'm scared that you're not because of the testimony you just gave. You, you, you didn't give that way. It wasn't a testimony like the scripture always say, giving a testimony where it, it, you, it leaves off at a cliffhanger. We don't know whether you did what was right, whether you did what was wrong. Right. Giving those type of testimonies. Well, when, when, I come, when, we, when we come up here, we're supposed to be giving testimonies of victory. Not, not, uh, and victories that are victories about how we're currently fighting, not, not, not testimonies about what we did 10 years ago. That don't help nobody right now. Amen. If I tell if y'all tell y'all about what if I tell y'all tell y'all about uh, how I'm overcoming adultery, but it was like but it was uh, eight years ago. How's that gonna help you now? Amen. I'm telling y'all as I'm going through my trial, I'm giving y'all examples of how I'm how I'm continuing to overcome. I speak I speak to my brother Michael a lot about about the things that I'm going through. I'm constantly. It, when I, when I speak to you, am I telling you about things that I did 10 years ago? Or I'm telling you about things that I've done recently and things that I am doing. Things you're doing right now. Exactly. I don't, I don't, speak, I don't speak about, well, when, when my wife used to do this. And when I, when I speak about adultery, I speak about how I'm overcoming it right now. I went, I went to uh, Burger Street for Pops Washington and Sister Karen uh, 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 about a month ago. And this girl, I, play, I went inside, placed my order, and this girl said, she was looking at me, she, trying to start a conversation, I already saw Satan. I knew, I, I saw him from, from a mile away. She said, you single? Now, just be, now, to, be, to be honest, she wasn't even, she really wasn't even my type. But that still didn't change the fact that I, I wanted to say, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm single. I, I, I just wanted to, it, it, Satan just came to me and said, he wanted me to say that. I said, no, but I said, no, I'm not single. I said, I'm married. She said, Oh, okay, okay, okay. Never mind, Dan. And then we conduct. Then we then then she was a little bit more professional about what she was doing. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't say. I didn't say. Well, I'm married, but uh, she left me, and I don't know. I I I ain't, I ain't give. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't. I didn't give any room for her, for any for the, for Satan to try to slip in. I said. I said no. I said no, ma'am. I said no, ma'am. She was younger than me. I said no, ma'am. I'm not single. I'm married. And she said, Oh, okay, 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 okay. I didn't. Like I said, even though she wasn't my type, that didn't change the fact that I wanted to say, yeah, I just, that's, that's just how, that's just how, that's just how Satan is. Just, he just won't, just want me to talk to somebody uh, because of my situation. But I, like I said, I, I love my wife too much to even do that, to even do something like that to her. Amen. But I'm speaking about this, but we don't hear a lot of brothers speak like this. We don't hear a lot of brothers give these type of testimonies. We don't hear a lot of brothers uh, talk about how they don't take their phone in the bathroom. I, I tell you right, I don't take my phone in the bathroom. Even when I'm in a hotel by myself, I don't. What it look like me taking my phone in the bathroom in, in my condition? What would that look like? Amen. I, I don't take my phone. I'm, when, I, when, I, when I need to go, when I need to go in, a, in the bathroom and conduct business, that's what I'm doing, conducting business. I leave my, fo I leave my phone in my room. I, and it, this wasn't something that I started doing with Naya, uh, 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 when Naya uh, got with me, so she could play. The, and I was doing this before Naya. I, I, uh, when I'm in a hotel by myself, you you can ask my mom and my dad. When I when I when I need to go, what I do, what I got to do. My phone is in my room. Uh, we don't got a lot of brothers that speak like this. Amen. We don't got a lot of we don't got a lot of brothers that uh, that will stand on this pulpit and and, uh, and speak like that. Amen. You 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 see some some of you saints that phone is a that phone is an extension of you. Uh, you cannot depart. When, 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 it's, uh, when it said, when, when it said, well, uh, God had joined together, let no man put asunder. You thinking about your phone, not your wife. <laughs> that's what that's what you thinking about. You, that's, you ain't you ain't thinking about your wife. You ain't Amen. thinking about your husband. You think about that cell phone. God joined you and that cell phone together, so let no let no man depart from. Don't so let no man put it asunder. So let them, so your wife can't go through that phone. Your husband can't go through that phone. He, that, that's that's. That, that's just an extension of you. It, it, you some of you, are, we, we would think you were born with that phone in your hand. But that's, that's not my testimony. When I'm at a saint's house, I'll, just, I'll easily just leave my phone somewhere and, and, go, and go about my business and, and fellowship. I'm not, wor I'm not worried about, what, I'm not worried about uh, what somebody might find on my phone. Naya, she just picks, she'll pick up my phone at, at, at her will. And, and go with uh, Peyton, uh, Peyton or Timothy and start playing games. I'm not, I'm not over there making sure she ain't open up. If I am making sure she ain't open up apps, it's apps that, I, uh, that uh, they want you to pay for the game. And I, and, uh, I, 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 I 
Prophet Washington told me a couple times where he just left his phone open and Baby Lee bought some shoes. <laughs> bought some uh, two, three hundred dollar shoes. <laughs> So, uh, but that, but that's the only, that's the only thing that's the only thing that I'm worried about. But I ain't worried about if she gonna if she gonna see any pictures on my phone that that shouldn't be there. She gonna see any videos on my phone that shouldn't be there. If she gonna see any text messages on my phone that shouldn't be there. I, that's, that's not the stuff I'm. That's not the stuff I'm worried about. But what's your testimony? Amen. I mean, I mean, if if, if that's your testimony, then speak about it. We we give space for you on Sundays to speak about it. If that's your testimony, speak about it. You get space on Tuesdays and Thursdays to stand up here and speak about it. Do it. I, I told y'all my testimony. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing everything that I've been instructed to do from the counsel that I received. And I'm going to keep on pressing on towards that higher calling. Because I know that if I, if, if I, if I keep, if I, no matter how hard my trial may get, no matter how weak that Satan wants me to get, no matter how many times Satan comes to me, if I keep telling myself that I can do it and taking everything one day at a time, I know that I will uh, as soon eventually I will uh, I will uh, receive deliverance. This these are these this, this is my testimony about how Amen. I'm how I'm walking. Hallelujah. What, so what's yours, Saints? What's yours? What, what, what's your testimony? And like and and Pastor Washington he he he's giving me instructions on things that I need to do. Amen. And like I said. I read, and when I read, I read the, when I read the scriptures, I use them and I apply them to my life. Amen. Some of y'all don't read, so that's how y'all don't know to apply the scriptures to your life. Y'all, saints, y'all do know that when y'all giving instructions, y'all supposed to go back to the person that gave y'all the instructions and give a report. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Deacon, how do you know that? Because it says, uh, uh, and, and, and them that teaches in all good things, uh, Communicate with them that teach you in all good things. Uh -huh. We have we have some good teachers in here. We've all been received. In, we all been uh, have given some instructions. Yeah, and forget not. But you take you take those instructions, then you go on about your merry way. And and you never talk and you never talk to Apostle Washington. You never talk to Sister Karen again again about what you about the instructions that you received. If we, you know another way to communicate. Like how I just said, testifying. Yes. Another way to, to communicate is by standing up here on this pulpit and telling y'all how and telling y'all and telling y'all how I'm overcoming. Amen. But also, but with the instructions that you receive, you're supposed to go back, uh, go back and tell them, uh, and uh, who gave you who gave you those instructions. You're supposed to go back and communicate with them about how you carried those instructions out to make sure that you did it right. To make sure you did uh, that uh, you didn't you didn't twist something here and change things there right. but, but y'all don't do that and then y'all then y'all get mad and y'all get discouraged and wonder why things haven't changed in your life oh, you get mad and you get discouraged and, and, and wonder why this person is receiving blessings but you're not oh, I, 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 I told you if y'all not really truly applying this thing to your life then what then what are you doing how do you expect to receive any type of blessing from Yahweh how do, you, how, you, how do you expect to even how you re respect to be saved? How do you how do you how do you expect to uh, meet Yahweh in peace? Uh -huh. But hey, like I said, I'm just I'm just a deacon. Just because I don't bear the title of the five folk, if you choose not to believe me, then that's you. But I'm still giving you words that you need to hear. Amen. I'm still giving you I'm still giving you uh, the uh, the words that Yahweh has given me. Yes. Go ahead. Therefore, my brethren. Dearly beloved and longed for, uh -huh. my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. That's right. I beseech Eudias and beseech and teach that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Uh huh. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow. Yeah, true. Help. That's the, true yoke fellow. That's a true companion in our Lord Yahshua the Messiah. Amen. We all companions in this way. We're all friends. We're not enemies. Amen. There shouldn't be brothers and sisters against one another. We're all friends, so every every you know that every single thing that you do has an effect on your brother or your sister. Amen. Although you might not think so because you're too selfish to even think about anybody else other than yourself. Amen. You know everything that you do has an effect on your brother or your sister. Everything, everything that you do has an effect on your husband and your wife. Amen. Everything that you do has an effect on your uh, your children. 
but yeah, but we have too many people that are too selfish to think about anybody other than themselves and think about anybody other than the, the lust that they trying to fulfill, the things that they trying to do, the things that they trying to accomplish. Yeah, trying to save your life. When we're, when we're charged by God to lose it, but you trying to con you still continue to try to save your life Amen. because of what you want to do. Go ahead. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, mm -hmm. help those women which laboreth with me in the gospel. Yeah. With Clement also. Mm -hmm. And with other my fellow laborers yeah. whose names are in the book of life. Go ahead. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. That's right. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Uh -huh. The Lord is at hand. You know, you, you, you want to know how you let your moderation be known? By going out there and shining the light. Amen. It says, it says the Lord is at hand. That, that means that any time Yahweh could crack that sky and come down, and you're going to wish, and you're going to, Wish to God that you had did everything that you was been that you had been instructed to do. You're gonna wish to God that you lived a life becoming of a saint. You're gonna wish to God that you loved your wife the way you're supposed to love your wife. You're gonna wish to God that you loved your husband the way you're supposed to love your husband. You're gonna wish to God that you loved your kids the way you're supposed to love your the way you were supposed to love your kids, whether whether they were in church or out of church. I, t I told you, I told you, saints that are so worried about your child that's out of church, but not so, but not focused on your children that you that you still have in church. Not but trying to trying to trying to keep the ones that you got, trying to keep them in the church, keep them and continue to encourage them to do what is right. But now you're too busy worrying about that one, the the the, the one that allows Satan to fill their heart. Amen. The one, the one that the one that uh, that uh, mind is all messed up. Not thinking about the child, that, the child that's struggling right here to stay sober-minded. I told, I, I told, I got, I got, I got, I got my daughter right, right now. Right now, my focus is, my focus is on her. She's, she's, she's the one that I, she's the ones that, that I got. That don't mean I don't, that don't mean I don't love my wife and I don't love my son. But right now, right as of right now, they're in Yahweh's hands. But right now, I, I got, I got her, I got her in my possession. So I'm trying to steal as much as much Yahweh in her as 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 as, as humanly possible. Amen. I'm trying to steal in the ways of Yahweh in her as humanly possible. I, I, she, she's I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not neglecting her and focusing on the ones that I got uh, uh the ones that I got out there in the world. I'm keeping my focus on solely on her. I'm, I'm and she and she and she sees that she always she tell, she tell me she said Daddy, Daddy I love you Daddy I missed you so much Daddy. Daddy, I don't want to go back. I want to stay with you forever. She sees, she sees how I'm striving to continue to do what is right. I'm not at home all sad, tumble. I know, I know you love me, baby, but I just wish mommy and daddy was here. No, nah, I'm not. I'm not at home doing nothing, doing none of that. She sees her dad happy. She sees her dad encouraged. Amen. She sees her dad out there, uh, uh, out, uh, out there fellowshipping with the saints. She don't see me all uh, sad and uh, 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 cast down. No, and, yeah. and and when she because when she sees me when she sees me happy that makes her happy. Amen. And when, and when she and when she's happy, I, I spend a lot of money on her. I, <laughs> I spend a lot. I spend a lot of money when I when I got her last Friday. I think Friday I spent about four or five hundred dollars on her, trying to get her dresses and uh, buy some shoes and stuff like that. And to the point to where she told me uh, Thursday night, she said, "Daddy." She said, you can't say no to me. I said, yes, I can. I said, I'm just not saying no to you right now. <laughs> I said, I can't. I said, I said, but I can't say no to you. She said, no, you can't. I said, I, I said, watch it. One day I'm going to say no to you. I said, but I'm just not going to do it right now because I said, because I love you and I miss you. <laughs> but, I, but I love my daughter. Amen. I, when I love you, so you, you want to know why I walk this way? You want to know why I talk the way I talk? Why I walk the way I walk, why I conduct myself the way I conduct myself, yeah. because I because I have true love for my child, Amen. for my children, for my family. That's that's why I do what I do. Why do you do what you do? Well, well, what, seriously, why do you, examine yourself, saints? I'm, I'm gonna take a drink. I'm gonna take a drink of this water. Examine yourself. Why do you do? Why do you do what you do? Uh, I'm, whether whether it's good or bad, why do you do what you do? Do you have this? Do you have this understanding? Of what you, or why you do what you do, or you just think that because it's how you feel, it's right to do. Because it's what you think it's right to do. 
I'll, I'll let y'all think about that. I'm going to take, take a drink of my water. Y'all think about it? That's right. Yeah, that's right. I, like I said, if I'm not standing up doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing, there is no hope for my family. Hallelujah. I can't pray for them the way I'm supposed to be, uh, the way I should be praying for them. If she gets, if she gets sick, I can't, uh, I can't, uh, uh, all I, I gotta, I gotta always go to a bishop and, 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 and ask them if they could, uh, pray for my daughter. And I'm, 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 I'm sitting up here supposed to be a deacon and I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be walking right in my household. But you, but some of you parents don't think this way. Don't think that way. Some of you parents are so, so scared and feel for your children that you don't, you scared to even tell them what, what's, what's right to do. And I, know, and I know why you can't tell them what's right to do because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing in the first place. Hallelujah. So you scared that if you tell them what they're supposed to be doing, they're just going to throw it back on you. Amen. They're just going to tell you, well, you're not doing this and you're not doing that. You, I, 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 I tell y'all, I tell y'all how, how I told the saints. I fear no man. I'm not scared. I'm not scared about if I do this or if I do that, what men may do to me. Amen. Especially my child. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not scared. I, 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 I given up all rights to myself. I, I given up. I given up completely everything. So what? And I'm allowing everything. They whatever Yahweh's will is. Whatever Yahweh's will and whatever He see fit to be done, then so be it. I'm not. I'm not scared. I'm not. I'm not scared about if I if I do this or if I if I do that. I may never see my daughter again. I, if I never see my daughter again, then that's Yahweh's will. Amen. I, and, 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 I've, and I've said this before that whether whether I think it's right or wrong, my God is still just. Amen. Yahweh is still just in His judgment. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Hey, uh, uh she, Michelle, need a microphone. Yahweh, I want to say this right on time. As far as with my son Royal, who came and got married at the church, he had a huge wall up, and it's because of Yahweh that he showed up out of nowhere and started calling me. And just recently, my son Caleb, um, I texted him to see how he was doing. And of course, just like Davion said, I mean, I want my children's soul to be saved too. So I told Caleb at the end of our conversation, I was like, it'd be good to see you come back to Yahweh and serve him. Yeah. I said, you, Tiandra, and Nathaniel. Yeah. So Nathaniel can go back to his wife, but I just want to give right. glory and thank Yahweh yeah. for this right on time. Yeah. Hey, I told y'all, if y'all doing it, y'all going to testify about it. Sister so Michelle, she raised up her hand and she testified about it. Your child not in church. What are you doing? You scared? Are you scared that if you tell them what they should, especially if they was in his way, are you scared that if you tell them what they should be doing, they not, they gonna stop talking to you? Uh, is that your fear? Uh, go talk to Apostle Washington, Sister Karen, if that's your fear. Uh, go talk to uh, Apostle Jennifer and uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, Mother Mother Sheree, if that's your fear. Go talk to my mom and dad, uh, 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 Prophet Jenkins and Sister uh, Mother Kathy, if that's your fear. That, I, I, if if that's your fear, I, I stand before you and tell you and tell you you're a coward. Amen. You are a cowardly saint. If that's your fear, because the only fear that we should have is from Yahweh. Hallelujah. That's the only thing that we should fear. But nah, nah, nah. That's your baby. You've been with them since they was little, and just for them to even for you, for you to even think about them just completely cut you off. That hurts you to your little poor little old heart. I didn't see my I, I didn't I didn't see my daughter for six months. I didn't know what she was doing, where she was at, who she was with. You don't think you don't think that hurt me to my heart? Amen. You don't think at times I wanted to give up? You don't think you don't think Satan came to me about how I how I should handle things? Hallelujah. But I stayed I stayed I stayed fast. I continue to do I continue to do the will of Yahweh. I didn't let I didn't let my condition bring me down. I still hold on I still hold on to the words that I have been taught. That's my testimony. Where's your testimony? How you gonna how you gonna speak on these things? That's my testimony. But now nah, you, you 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 scared of that uh scared of your child going no going no contact with you. So you scared to when, when you when you when you talk to him, you 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 act you act as though things are just oh hunky dory. Hey hey baby, how was your day? Oh okay, that was good. Okay, you you you're not you're not constantly reminding them of if they don't come back to Yahweh, they are doomed. Amen. They shall they 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 are condemned. They they gonna lose their life if they don't come back to Yahweh. They gonna lose. You you not you not saying these things. 
Because you, you're scared, you're scared they're going to hang up in your face. You're scared they, they, if, they, if they hang up in your face and you, then you try to call them back again the next day, they won't answer. You're scared that, you're scared that you're not going to be able to FaceTime them no more. Is, is that your fear? Uh, what a, uh, what a, well, God can't use no Calvary soldier. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I, he can't use no, and when, 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 it, uh, and when, when uh, John looked into the lake and he saw the fearful, he was talking about those that were scared to stand up and do what is right to do. Amen. He was talking about those that were scared to stand up and lift up a, uh, lift up a standard against the evil doer. I, you may be scared to admit it, but I'll tell you right now, if you have a child, family member, or anything, anything like that, if they was in here and they backslid, they're an evil doer. I tell you, you may, you may not tell, you may not utter, you may not utter those words, but I speak with you plain, all plainness of speech. If they, if if Yahweh, it don't matter if they were in here or not. If Yahweh don't reside in their heart, they're an evil doer. Amen. Satan's, Satan's their daddy. Hallelujah. And, and, and that's just that's just how it is. Amen. Go ahead. Uh, praise Yahweh, saints. I uh, thank y'all for the word. Um, uh, my daughter Leah came to the house yesterday, helping helping my wife, you know, do some some paperwork on the printer. And uh, <clears throat> me, I'm gonna stand up for the word. Uh, my daughter used to be in this way, you know. So my my wife asked her, "Can you help me print this paper for the church?" She's like, "For your church?" I'm like, "You, it was your church too. You used to come here, Amen. you know." Uh, uh, I'm gonna stand on the word for for. I thank Yahweh for bringing me, you yeah. know, to here. She's like. <clears throat> you know, I, I told her you used to come here. And when she was leaving, I said, uh, uh, church is tomorrow at 10. You know, I, I prayed to, to, that I see you here in the morning. Yeah. He got his testimony. Where's yours? Hey, Amen. Go ahead. Rejoice in the Lord always. Uh -huh. And again, I say rejoice. That's right. Let your moderation be known unto all men. That's right. The Go Lord ahead. The Lord is at hand. Mm -hmm. Be careful for nothing. But yeah. I am... But I'm everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Uh -huh. Let your requests be made known unto Yahweh. Saints, you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. You don't have to fear. Yahweh, as long as you stay true to him, Yahweh will take care of everything. That's why yeah. that, I keep telling myself that. As long as I stay true to him, Yahweh going to take, take care of everything. I, told, I, I get the trial of adultery comes to me every single day. I, every single day, Amen. but I'm tell me, tell me, I, 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 did Satan, a woman walk by and tell me, and, and Satan tell me how my whole life could be with. I don't even know this woman. Tell me how my whole life could be with this woman. How, how maybe she, maybe, maybe she would actually treat you right and love and love Naya and love you and be right. I don't, I don't know this woman. That, but yeah, but 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 that that's Satan. That Satan uses the fight using our devices. Uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, try to trick me. I don't, I don't even know this. I don't know her name. This is the first time I ever seen this woman. But this, but these are the things that he present me with. Uh, and I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Pastor, Pastor Holly said, just replace that whoever that lady is, just with my, with my wife. As long as I, as long as I keep doing what is right. He always will. Maybe she'll come back and then treat me right and love me the way I'm Amen. love me the way I I, I want to be loved and stuff like that. Just replace that lady with my wife. I like I, 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 I say say something when I have Naya with me. Say you want me to uh, tell Naya to go uh, if I see another woman with with her child that look like look like about the same age as Naya. Go uh, go uh, write down my phone number and give it to Naya and tell her go give it to a lady or something like that. Trying to you trying to. Uh, uh, use her uh, as as my pickup artist or, so, or something like that. What is it? Called? What is it called? Oh, wingman. wingman. There we go. Try, see, uh, see, yeah. Trying to trying to use trying to use my own daughter to help me commit a sin. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Throwing bait out there. Yeah. I told y'all this. There's an app. I'll be on Facebook. Uh, there's an app that keep popping up for. Uh, it's a dating app for uh, for singles, uh, single but singles but they're uh, single parents. It keep popping up. You don't think I want to download that app and create a profile? Uh -huh. Every time I, every time, and every time I see that, I see that there's an X at the top uh, when you scroll through. There's an X at the top, and I click the X. But somehow it keep coming back. And every time I see it, I click the X, and I and it says, and it didn't ask me uh, what was wrong with this ad, and I said it don't pertain to me. But Satan, t <laughs> <laughs> Satan tells me it pertains to me. <laughs> But I click on, and every time it keep coming at, coming back, I didn't download it, then create a secret profile, and 
uh, just use my middle name and my last name. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then put my yeah put my uh, uh, my you yeah my username under D Smooth Seven Twenty or something like that. No, I didn't do that. I, I I every time it comes up, I click that X and I delete that. I uh, uh, um, uh, try to delete the ad, but it keep coming. But I, I I do it every single time. Amen. Even even when even when those uh, those fifty videos come up on Facebook. I see one, I scroll past it. I see another one, I just, I, I, I know after I, after I see two, it, it, it's probably gonna be about three, four, five, five, uh, five, six, seven more waiting for me. So after I, I see one, I scroll past it, I, I'll be looking at a picture of a saint. It, uh, a picture, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll heart that picture of a saint or uh, the word, word come up on Facebook and then the next thing I scroll to will, will be a woman with uh, barely any clothes on and then I'll, I gotta get out of Facebook now. I gotta log out of Facebook. And it's to the point where I even limit the time that I'm on Facebook. If I am on Facebook, it's to the point where if I do get on Facebook, I'm listening to the word. Amen. I'm, listening to, I'm listening to the things that's going to help me. I'm watching Amen. the things that's going to help me to continue to press on. I'm not looking at those things that's, that's going to allow me to, um, that's going to make me question, uh, question my condition. No, I'm trying, I mean, I'm continuing to encourage myself. Amen. Yeah, exactly. I'm picking my battles. But some of y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't have that that resilience. That video, that video pop up. You are gonna watch every every four minute and thirty second of that video. And then 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 Facebook then Facebook gonna uh uh, uh yeah gonna suggest related videos. It's gonna uh it's gonna load that algorithm and to the point that every time you get on Facebook, hey, that's gonna be every single video that pop up. Hey, you're gonna watch every single one. You're just gonna be scrolling, scrolling through TikTok and just watching videos of just men, women, whatever, whatever. Just yeah, shirt off and all that. You're gonna be watching that stuff. But so, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. After you want, after you don't watch like uh, 10, 10 videos, five minutes each. Then these these say Satan get behind me. <laughs> He said, "Satan give up this." Satan said, "No, oh, yeah. oh, he was already in front of you. He was saying, he, he, Satan, Satan grabbed your finger and had you press on that video. He had you uh, uh, press pause and rewind it and play that video again. Now you talking about Satan get behind me? Well, yeah, he gonna get behind you now because after he made you do what you just did, he, he gonna say, "All right, I'm done. I'll, I'll be back tomorrow, or I'll be back later on tonight when your wife sleep. I'll be back. I'll be back when your, uh, when your husband go fellowship with the brothers." And you and you and you at home all alone. I that I talk, that's I talk, I don't I don't just be sitting. I just don't be sitting at home in my bedroom, uh, thinking about oh uh, uh, how 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 would feel to be with another woman. No, I I get up, I get up, I get out of my room. I go take I'll go take a cold shower real quick. I'll call up a brother, ask them what they doing. Uh, uh, okay, I'll be over there. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard to, it's gonna be hard to do anything that I want to do when I'm in the presence of saints. Amen. I, 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 I do everything I need to do to uh, make sure that I don't, I don't commit adultery. Amen. I don't, uh, I don't get mad at my wife. I don't call her. I don't call her, cussing her out. I don't, I, I do uh, uh, to make sure that I can, uh, when something happens, I can pray. I can continue to pray for my children and pray for my family. I do everything that I need to do. Is it hard? Oh yeah, I'm 30 years old. I'm 30 years old. Uh, Satan tell me I'm at, I'm in the prime of my life. You don't think you don't think I don't want to see how many women I can get? Uh, have, uh, 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 how many women I can get? Oh yeah, of course. And then me, per I don't even like talking to women. And Satan tell and Satan wants me to talk to women, but I always I always resist the Satan. I always resist the devil. I don't I don't dwell I don't dwell on those things. I don't allow those uh, thoughts to consume me. To the to the point to where I'm about to explode and I just can't contain myself anymore. No, I I put the I put the word on. It's it's it's, it's hard to think about sex when you listen to the word and it's telling you not to think about sex. Amen. I I I, I listen to some spiritual songs. I I look at the chosen. Amen. There's, there's nothing sexy about the chosen. I look I look at that. There's nothing sexy about the Ten Commandments. There's nothing sexy about uh, about uh, Noah, about uh, 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 David and Goliath. I look at all those things to, to continue to resist the devil and make sure that I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Be careful for nothing. That's right. But in everything, 
by prayer and supplication, uh -huh. and thanksgiving, yeah. let your requests be made known unto Yahweh. Yes. yes. In the peace of Yahweh, which passeth all understanding, uh -huh. shall keep your hearts and minds through Yahshua the Messiah. That's right. Finally, brethren, mm -hmm. whatsoever things are true, uh -huh. whatsoever things are honest, yep. whatsoever things are just, uh -huh. whatsoever things are pure, yeah. whatsoever things are lovely, mm -hmm. whatsoever things are of good report, yeah. if there be any virtue, mm -hmm. and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's right. Those things. Think, think on Go ahead, you can read that. Go ahead, go ahead. Those things which ye have both learned uh -huh. and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. If you, if you think on all those things in verse 8, Yahweh will be with you. You will have peace. If you think on things, those things that are true, what's true? These words I'm giving to you today, these words that Apostle Y should give to you or any other bishop that get up here and speak, these, th those, are, those are the things that are true. Amen. Uh, what's pure? should be your life. It should be the way you walk. Uh, it should be Yah uh, Yahweh. He's pure. Those things that are a good report, that testimony that you stand up here and give about how you overcome and Satan and you fighting a good fight of faith, that, uh, a, a good report, how a uh, bishop get up here and tell you and uh, use themselves as an example of how they're overcoming Satan and fighting a good, uh, good fight of faith. That's a good report. Uh, uh, what else we got? Uh, uh, those things that are lovely, y'all want to know what's lovely? Wives, your husband, he's lovely. Husband, your wife, she's lovely. They, they, that, that's what you should be thinking on. You should be thinking about thinking thinking about things like that. Amen. Those are the things that you should be thinking about. Hallelujah. And and like I said, you think about you keep these things with you. And you think about these things. The God of peace shall be with you. But that's my time, saints. Man. I thank y'all for allowing me to get up here today Hallelujah. and minister to you all and uh, allow me to make it here this, this day. But I'd like to ask all the saints to stand and rise and receive uh, Pastor Hurley by saying, praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Man. Hallelujah, saints. Is Yahweh good? All the time. Amen. You can be seated. I thank Yahweh uh, for the church, uh, for the work of the ministry that's going on in Mexico right now. Amen. Thanking Yahweh for Apostle Washington, the great work he's doing. Amen. You know, not just in Mexico, but here in Lubbock. Amen. If it wasn't for him, that this wouldn't be taking place. Even in Arlington, what's going on there. Amen. Amen. And I thank Yahweh for God sending his son, Yeshua Messiah, to come and be our savior. Amen. And I keep him on my mind all the time. He's the author and finisher of our faith. And he's the one that we have to have in the forefront of our lives at all times. He's the one that we speak about. When we're talking about doing what's right to do, we're talking about doing what Yeshua would do. Amen. Hearts at all times. And remember what he has done for us. And how much he loved the world that he, uh, God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. It's important. If we'll remember these things, we'll do the right thing. Hallelujah. I have uh, Deacon Davion's testimony. All that stuff he said, he, I'm not sinning either. That's why I'm up here speaking to you. Amen. If I was going to be a sinner, I wouldn't waste my time talking to y'all. I wouldn't be here. I'd go do whatever I wanted to do. And would not be here. <laughs> That's for sure. But I am growing in grace. Amen. And I've made enough mistakes to where I know how to have compassion on people who have fallen. And I think that's really important. If you want to save souls, win souls. Ooh, I can barely. T Look, I'm getting fat, y'all. I can barely button this thing up. If you want to win souls, if you really want to help people, then you better have compassion. Amen. Now, the reason why the word had to go forth by Deacon Davion in the fashion that he brought it forth Amen. is because there are hard-headed ones. Amen. And that's why the word has to go forth like that. It's not like we just come up here and say, I'm bitter. I'm going to preach a message and I don't like you. 
and you're going to feel it, not my friends. I hate y'all. Get ready. It's about to get rough in here. That's not the spirit that we have in here. Amen. The problem is that we got people who just are so hard-headed, and they just won't do what's right to do. So the word has got to hurt your feelings. If you've ever had your feelings hurt in here, it's because you're hard-headed, and you're not giving heed, and you keep on doing the wrong thing, and that the spirit loves you enough to hurt your feelings. Amen. 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 But let's go just look and see a little something in Rome, Revelation chapter 19. Start in very, in very first work, verse for me. We're just going to start there. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank Yahweh for my wife who's back in Arlington. She uh, would have came, but she's got stuff she's doing at the house. It's been kind of hectic since my mom passed. And, uh, but things are starting to wind down. I truly thank Yahweh for... Uh, Young Robert, Brother Robert, Sister Disa's son, and his wife who've been helping us out quite a bit at the house. It's a beautiful thing to have brothers and sisters who don't mind coming over and helping out. They don't Amen. run away from laboring. Hallelujah. You know, I thank Yahweh for Sister Buttercup. She's always had a spirit where she wants to be involved, wants to help out with, um, you know, when we were raising funds. And she's, she's willing to make all the announcements. And it just, it's clear to me that her heart is in this place. Now, I know that there's others that have that same spirit. I just may not know about you. <laughs> if you're doing right, don't, don't get tore up because I just said something good about her. Amen. That's the thing. It's like when I know I'm doing right, if you don't mention my name, that's all right. I'm okay with my name not being mentioned as so long as I am doing right. Amen. Amen. So I can still be happy and rejoice with them that are rejoicing. When people get a good word spoken about them, I'm not going to get all tore up out of shape because I didn't get mentioned too. Your conscience should tell you whether you're doing what the word said to do or not. Hallelujah. But let's read and see what does verse 1 say. Revelations 19 and 1. What does it say? For it's written. Yes. And after these things, I heard a great voice of many people I heard in a heaven, great voice of much people in heaven. Saying hallelujah. Saying hallelujah. Salvation. Hallelujah. That means praise Yah. Amen. Salvation. Salvation. That's why we're here, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Salvation. Do you want it? Yeah. I would assume so if you're here. Amen. You want salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Yah. Salvation. And glory. And glory. And honor. Glory is like, wow, that's great. That means that's powerful. That's weighty, significant. You know, something in your life that's mighty, powerful. It matters. It's significant. It has weight Amen. to it. it. You know, even shiny. It's like it catches your attention. Glory does. It's like, this is glorious. Amen. This thing should be glorious to us. Should be glorious enough for you to finally get baptized in the name of Yahshua Messiah. Amen. Finally cry out and pray and ask Yahweh to be filled with his spirit until you speak in tongues as being the sign. Amen. Because the whole land Amen. It's right now speaking to you whether you've spoken in tongues or not. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is being poured out on you right now by me preaching the word. This is the Holy Spirit being delivered to you right now. Amen. But you've got to pray to Yahweh. Cry out. Ask him to, to fill you. And then when you speak in tongues, you know that you've been filled with his spirit. But this spirit right now is being delivered to you. You've got to accept it. Amen. You need to believe it. It's glorious. Hallelujah. And glory. And honor. And honor. That means, Lord, you know, whenever you're doing the right thing. I know whenever uh, Deacon Jenkins is up here preaching right now, it, it, it's honorable. Amen. You know, you, you can honor that. Amen. You, it, whenever somebody does the right thing, you can honor that person. You know? Amen. I mean, even when they don't do the right thing, you can still show the honor that Yahweh told you to give to people. Amen. But I would say he's doing a very honorable job. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I think that nobody in here should get offended. He, whenever, he, whenever he smacked his lips and said, <clears throat> I can't smack very good, y'all. Amen. 
I just tried to smack. I couldn't smack. But you know, when he was like, y'all 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 can't do right. I'm gonna try. I was like, he don't hate you. He's not smacking and mad because <laughs> he hates you. No, the spirit is like, come on. Let's do this thing. Hallelujah. Let's make up our mind fully to, 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 to pray and pray and pray for Yahweh's spirit and tarry till we get it. Hallelujah. That means wait. That means don't quit. Don't quit. Don't go off anywhere else. Wait. Tarry till you get it. Amen. Anything you're asking Yahweh for, whether it's the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues or just you're, you're, you're waiting on Yahweh to hear your prayer and answer it. Terry, till you get the answer. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't, don't Terry lazy. That means don't wait around doing nothing, Amen. waiting for God to bless you. Do something. Hallelujah. You want God to be in your life? Get up. Amen. Do something. Do something while you can do something. Amen. Scripture says, I call you young men because you're strong. Amen. Strength runs out. Hallelujah. As you get older, if you haven't disciplined yourself to do right when you were young, when you get older, it gets harder. Amen. You really want to throw in the towel. You want to call it quits. Yeah, because you haven't lived the kind of life that has given you peace so all you got is anxiety, Amen. depression, stress. I was talking to Michael uh, about something. I say, I say, you got young people stress. I say, old people got a different kind. They got the, they got the kind that makes them feel like they're going to have a heart attack and die. Amen. You got the kind where you just, you know, like young people tired and old people tired. Old people tired is wondering if your heart's going to bust. Amen. <laughs> you just, ah, ah, I really got to stop. The young person, they, they let them sit down for about one and a half minutes, and they're back up running again. The, the older person is like, I need to make sure I don't die right now. Amen. Because I have not, <laughs> I've neglected, you know, it's not like you're in that shape you used to be in. But you got to start serving Yahweh. Do this thing while you're young. Quit being lazy. Amen. Get this word in you. Hallelujah. You're going to need it. You're going to need this in you, all you young people. Start now. Amen. Amen. Start. Start getting into the details of what we're teaching and, and quit being satisfied with the general overview because you like it like that. Amen. Because you're not really doing everything that you've been taught. You just have told yourself you are. Hallelujah. You understand? But it said, hallelujah, salvation, and, and, and glory, glory, and honor, and honor, and power, and power, belong to Yah unto Yahweh our unto God. Unto the Lord our God. Amen. For true and righteousness are for his judgments. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he has judged the great For whore. he has judged who? The great whore. The great whore. There's a great whore in the land. Amen. And that great whore got you acting like a whore. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. When you can't love your husband, love your wife. Amen. Obey your parents. When you can't do everything that Yahweh is calling for you to do. You've been influenced by the great whore. Amen. And you're acting like one too. Amen. Examine yourself because Yahweh is going to, look, uh, uh, Deacon Jenkins, he's going through a thing. And he's, able, he's being obedient. He's following what he's been taught. So he's able to talk about it. Amen. He knows that there are some people in here that are going through a very similar thing. So he can speak on it. And those people can really take that exactly for what he's saying and apply it to their life but not all of us are in those exact same shoes so we have to realize the point that he's making and we can apply it to our lives basically simply saying you need to be as determined to do the right thing as he is even though you're not going through the exact same thing as him Amen. you got to ha have a fully determinedness to yourself that you're going to do everything that you've been taught to the t 
Hallelujah. I dotted, T crossed. Yeah. You're going to do all of it. Yeah. And you're not going to faint. Or else you're going to be a whore. Yeah. That's right. It's bad. Amen. You got to look at it like that. Amen. Uh, I look at it like this. The spirit, you never know. The spirit has been talking about shutting this place down <laughs> in Lubbock for a couple of years Amen. now. If the spirit does it, who's going to backslide? Amen. Whores. Yep. That's right. Everybody who sits around and says, well, I like my house, is a whore. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. Everybody who says, well, I don't think my husband will go, so I'll stay back. Is a whore. Amen. 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 The Spirit is telling us that we need to love our spouses. Stop focusing on what other people are doing. Amen. Only focus on ourselves. Amen. Amen. Let's go over. Let's go to. It's going to be Hebrews. Let me see. Hallelujah. 12. Hallelujah. Let's go to Hebrews 12. Yes, and the people who give up and listen to that great whore and are influenced by, it's, a, it's, it's talking about false, false righteousness. Amen. Amen. To where you think that you're right. And it's not based off of what Yahweh says. It's based off of what you say. Because the devil gave you words that were different from Yahweh. Amen. Here's what Yahweh has to say through Paul. Read. Hebrews 12 and 1. Yes. For it's written. Yes. Therefore seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Therefore seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us, uh, let us lay aside every let weight. Let us lay aside every weight. Every weight. Amen. What is that? I, would, I think it's really important. What is that weight? Amen. What, what can every weight? That means there's more than one weight. And whatever that weight is, lay it aside. Amen. The weight is... Doing something different than what Yahweh wants you to do. Amen. Amen. So basically, it's like this. It is a weight to worry about other people. Amen. If you, this is what I see. Everybody who backslides or stays in church with a backslid heart, you're here, but you're backslid. You're angry, you're frustrated, you're sad, you're depressed. Amen. You're of no good to anybody else in here. Amen. Some of us believe all the teaching, but we're still miserable. Amen. And you're in here and you're just sad all the time. Amen. And you're crying about the people that you love that aren't in church. But you, 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 you're so upset that they're not here, it's killing you. Amen. And I know why you do that. It's because you think that makes you better. And most people who get upset like that, really emotional people who always get sad about everything, they may never say these words, but they think they're better than you. Amen. Because they think you have to be that sad to be a good person. Yeah. And they're wrong. You have to be that sad to mess yourself up. Yes, Lord. Hey, why weren't you at the fellowship? I was sad. Yeah. yeah. Really, really sad people are sometimes really, really lazy people. Amen. Amen. Instead of learning how to do things and be there for people, they just master sadness. 
I love them so much they're not here. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Amen. Sad, 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 sad. Amen. You're not encouraging anybody that comes in your presence because you're too busy on being miserable. Hallelujah. That is not the way that Yahweh has told us to be. And that's a weight Amen. to be sad like that. You want to know why mo lots of y'all can't come in here and the praise service is dead? You're some sad folks. Weighed down with your worries. I don't think my husband loves me. And can't praise the Lord. Just can't come in here and praise the Lord. Amen. I think my wife is cheating on me. Can't come in here and sing your song right. Amen. Just can't. Because you're too weighed down. You're always sad. You're always depressed. I wish people wanted to be with me. You're depressing. Amen. No, they don't want to be with you. But if you acted happy, and you had some joyful qualities. I realized this a while back. People don't want to be around downers. Amen. They want to be around people that are positive and happening. In a good mood. Amen. And they don't want you to be clingy or needy. They want you to have... People are attracted to people that have a great attitude, and their attitude is like this. I love you, but I don't. People don't realize how much of, how, of a suction cup they are. Amen. Just, just sucking the life out of folks. A vacuum. Everybody in here needs to learn how to win souls. Amen. By being joyful, by being positive. By being in a good mood. Amen. By being energized. By perfecting what you do. You can't just come in here and play our instruments and sing our songs and half do a good job. Everybody's trying to get together and we can't. Most of y'all stayed up till 1 or 2 in the morning and you didn't bring any energy to church. Amen. A lot of you have been focusing on your problems more than your praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah we, we said the devil got into praise service. He sure did. He made you so lazy you won't practice nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. Right. We'll come in here and the sound will never be right. Yeah. The instruments will never be right. right. Because we got so many other things to do other than make sure service will be ready. Because something's sucking the life out of you. So we need to lay aside every single weight. That's why, that's why, some, that's why everybody else, so Pastor Bibbs preached a, re a recent message. He said, I was right in the back of the other bishops. Well, he wasn't doing anything. He was just acting like he was with us. And just right in the backs of the ones who are doing things. Amen. That's why if somebody comes in here who's really, really energized and want, motivated and wanting to do something, you're like, oh, thank you, God. You brought somebody in here to do my job for me. <laughs> Seriously. Amen. It's like we got, we got Madeline's sister. Are you talented? What, do you know how to do stuff? You got any talents? things that you can do because there might be some people in here who really hope that you can do their job for them and we don't that's not the right way to be and, and, and our message is you, you know that's the risk whenever we have visitors and we go go ahead full speed ahead on the people that are already here and we we still continue you know constructively criticizing them because they need to change right Amen. But, the, but if we're not careful the visitors like I don't want to be part of this. <laughs> These people need to get it together. I'll come back in a year. And so, saints, that's why it's really, really important that we put Yeshua Messiah at the center of everything. Amen. 
So we always put him at the forefront and we lift him up so much higher than we lift ourselves. And then when we talk about ourselves that we're doing what Yahshua Messiah is calling for us to do, we don't look like we're praising ourselves too much and we don't look like we're putting ourselves on a pedestal. We need to put Yeshua up on the highest pedestal, Amen. so high. I mean, that means you're not lazy. You can actually play your song without messing up. You can give your testimony without messing up. Amen. You can clean the church without, you know, neglecting it and it's a mess and somebody else got to do it for you. And you just never hear in, in the things you can do, you don't do, and you don't want anybody to know what you can do. Amen. Because they're going to expect you to. Do what you know you can do. Amen. So you don't want them to know what your gift is. Amen. And then that's not putting Yeshua on the highest pedestal. Hallelujah. It turns church into an agony, an agonizing event. Nobody wants to come in here and get rebuked and have a hard message spoken about how bad you are and how hard-headed you are. And nobody wants to listen to it either. You're doing everybody a disservice when you walk that way. Amen. How about we all get it together? Hallelujah. So we can come all in here together and lift up Yeshua as we should. Amen. And have church be like, like Trump. Make it pleasant again. Amen. Let's make church pleasant again. Hallelujah. We can do this. It's going to take some work. Imagine. How the paradigm would shift if we actually really cared and gave our whole hearts to the Lord. Amen. We came in here and the preacher would have to like do a double take. Hold on. I was about to preach a really hard rebuking message, but it looks like these guys are doing the right thing. Amen. Let me, oh, I might actually be able to say some pleasant words and comfortable. Yes, Lord. Nice, sweet happy wonderful words if we just do what's right to do it'd be great wouldn't it amen everybody standing up doing great maybe like a visitor come in not doing great but every, all all the ones that have been here are, are caught on humbled themselves amen. not people who want to be praised they come in and give them give the most humble testimonies pointing to yeshua amen and even when they talk about themselves and give themselves as an example it's clear that they're not praising themselves it, 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 that would be pleasant when we have to speak about what we do in a hard rough way it's because you're being hard-headed amen. amen but what does it say wherefore seeing we are come past about so great cloud of witnesses uh -huh. let us lay aside every weight that's what paul is begging the people to do yeah. let's have a pleasant service amen. let's lay aside every weight amen, amen. and what and the sin which does so easily besets us. You know what your sin is, the one that's real easy Amen. For, to get to you. Amen. We're not all the same. Amen. Some of us just, you know, I mean, look, to me, lying covers everything. It's just what are you lying about? Amen. That's your sin. What are you lying about? Amen. You're everybody, everybody has sins they want to commit, and then they lie about their sins. Amen. Like, no, I didn't, like, like, like you said, no, I didn't watch that video with that lady's butt. Now you got to lie because you did it. Amen. I'm not doing that. I don't watch those kind of videos. Amen. But I'm a human being and Amen. a heterosexual. So when I see one, I want to keep looking at it. Amen. Amen. Like, you know, and it don't, I'm married, but it don't matter. I'm like, hey, that's a butt. It's shaped nice enough. I like to look at it. Amen. But, I'm not, but, but if you do, it'll kill your spirit. Hallelujah. I wouldn't be able to come in here and preach like this. And we need everybody, whether you're, you can preach or you're, 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 you know, you're a sister that not, isn't going to be preaching. But you still can do a lot in here. Amen. You can come in here and perform your duty to the Lord. Amen. 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 And that involves uh, uh, how 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 uh, how in tune are you when people are giving their testimonies? Amen. Amen. Sister Diesel was up here and I testified. I looked around. There were some people that weren't even looking at her. 
You know, we say let another mouth praise you. Yeah. Uh -huh. We also say let's let another mouth rebuke the other people that aren't treating you right. Yeah. Instead of you wanting to do it. Amen. She's probably too busy giving her testimony. But we notice whenever we try to testify and people really aren't even paying attention. Amen. How is that helpful to your brother and your sister? How is that helpful to you? And I have to wonder, what are you thinking? Is there a reason why you're not paying attention? Have you already judged her? You're not supposed to, whether somebody's giving a testimony or not, you don't reject them. Amen. I heard her from the heart. What I want, I need you to understand, what I want is reconciliation in my family. Amen. That's what I want. In, in other words, what she's saying is I want to get stronger so that I can play a role in the reconciliation of my family. Is that right, Sister Disa? That's what you want, isn't it? Amen. And sometimes people testify, they want you to pray for them. Dr. Phil's show shouldn't be the only safe place. Amen. This should be a safe place. Amen. When you come in here and you testify about what you're going through yeah. and how you're not sinning, but because you're human, it's not always easy. Yeah. And you know you're growing in grace. So you know that Yahweh is shaping you through what you're going through. And we're, I'm your brother, I'm your sister, I'm up here telling you about what I'm going through, but I'm doing it right. I'm in the middle of it. It's not over. I know it's not over. You have an opportunity to tell your brothers and sisters, I'm going to pray through this. I'm going to fast through this. I'm going to make it through this. And that classifies as a testimony of victory, like Deacon, Deacon Jenkins was saying. And then you should have the decency to pay attention. Amen. Because you're going to want people to pay attention when you testify. Amen. And when people pray for you and it works out, you know it was your prayer, your obedience, and their prayer. Amen. That's why people, two or three coming together, touching and agreeing, you know, praying together. Amen. That's what makes this a, a brothers and sisters body of believers together. Amen. All calling on the same God. Yes. Apostle Paul said, pray for us. So you are supposed to be praying for each other. When you find out what people are going through. Amen. Not judging. Not ignoring. Right? Amen. I see it all the time. People don't get along. People don't get along. They don't care about each other enough. These are all weights. These are all sins. Amen. Sin is a weight. It's not saying let's lay aside every weight and the sin as if it can be two. It doesn't have to be two different things. It's, it's just a doubling. You'll read it in Proverbs. and it, it, Whenever he, they say the same thing two different ways, but it means the same thing. It's a doubling. It's for emphasis. Amen. It's trying to open up your understanding. Sin is a weight. It's going to weigh you all the way down to the lake of fire. Amen. Yeah, but it's like all things are lawful, but not everything is edifying or expedient. So if you do a thing that's not helping you, it becomes a sin to you. Amen. Right? If a man knows to do good but doesn't do it, it's sin to that person. Amen. So if you know you didn't need to go to that movie, you needed to stay home and pray, but you went to the movie, yeah. that was a sin unto you. Amen. So don't waste your time saying, well, I didn't lie. I didn't commit adultery. But you're not doing the things that is keeping you strong. Amen. It's a sin to you. But you can't judge your brother because they went to the movies. You should have prayed with me. We can be like that sometimes. Amen. Especially whenever what you're going through hasn't been resolved, but your brother's problem has been fixed. And they come up here and want to tell you about how theirs got fixed, but you're still, you know, 
neck deep in your problem. Amen. You don't want to rejoice with the person who's rejoicing. You, you just you just want to you want to shut down while they're testifying. Amen. Selfish. Whenever somebody comes up here and says, don't you know, we prayed and my, my niece was healed. And you don't get up. You don't lift a hand. Amen. You don't clap. You don't say, thank you, Yahweh. Amen. Hallelujah. That means you're a selfish, selfish thing. You're a selfish person. Amen. Because I look at it like this. The next time I come up and testify about something and nobody reacts, I'm like, you know, they say karma, even though we don't believe in karma. <laughs> it's like, how can I get mad at them? I did the same thing to them. Yeah. That's how I learned not to mistreat people because of people, people had mistreated me. And I realized how bad it felt to hurt people's feelings. Not when I was hurting their feelings. I couldn't tell it hurt them that bad. I thought it was funny. I thought it was great. But whenever somebody started making fun of me and it hurt my feelings, made me look bad, made me have to go through stuff, then I realized, oh, that's wrong. And then with the power of the Holy Spirit, it helps you put two and two together. I don't like it when I'm mistreated. So that equals I shouldn't mistreat other people. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeshua said as you... As you would have others do to you, you know, do the same to them. But it's like, how many people have read that and still don't do it? They're not putting two and two together. Hallelujah. I say, how many times are you going to stay up till four o'clock in the morning and drag your little self in here all disheveled and tore up looking and can't praise the Lord? I don't even care if you were up all night because you were crying because of your trials. Amen. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You need to lay aside all these weights. Amen. Cast all your cares on Yahweh. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some people, are, especially like husbands and wives do this to each other the most. You'll wait till they're really, really, really tired. And where they can't keep their eyes open anymore. And you, you give them the silent treatment till then. Amen. And then right when they cannot stay awake anymore, you wake them up. Amen. And then you let them know everything that's bothering you. Amen. And you make sure they understand, I'm not letting you go back to sleep until you say I'm right and you're wrong. Amen. About all of it. No, I, I, need, I need you to take full blame Amen. and you shut off I mean, males can do this females can do this oh, yeah. Hallelujah. but the ladies do it more <laughs> it's just true <laughs> men are more like more, more like Urkel when they do wrong yeah. did I do that <laughs> like you don't even like realize you're hurting somebody you're like did I do that the ladies hold on to it and make an inventory list. And they'll wait till you're exhausted because that's going to be the best time to torture you. Amen. You know, the Bible says the man is the stronger vessel, the lady is the weaker vessel. So the weaker vessel got to use some kind of tactics on the stronger vessel. Amen. These are facts. Silent treatments, holding out. Dead time, time, time. <laughs> These are the weapons. Amen. Character defamation. Oh, I'm going to talk bad about you to everybody. Because that's the lady's weapon. But don't you know men do that too? Oh, yeah. They go to the bishops and just run their spouse down. Right. You're not laying aside every weight. Right. You're not focused on yourself. So what the Spirit is saying to each and every sing single one of you they can be doing wrong, whether it's your husband, your wife, your parents, your, your children, your brother, your sister, the bishop, Amen. sister supervisor, yeah. somebody on your job, 
family who doesn't go to church, the president, you name them. Somebody could be doing you wrong. Quit talking about them. Amen. Quit bringing them up. Quit looking on their phone. Amen. Quit sneaking into their phone and looking in their messages. Quit getting onto their social media and seeing if you can find them doing something they shouldn't be doing. Amen. Take them off that tracking device. Amen. Stop getting on their phone and sharing to you their location on an iPhone so you know where they're at all the time. Amen. Because this is a wait for you. It's a wait. It's a wait. It's a wait. Quit trying to find out what other people are doing wrong. Yeah. Because there's a million people on YouTube. Yeah, those liberals. Yeah, those right-wing conservatives. Yeah, those, the, that Disney, I tell you. Oh, those wokesters. Oh, those feminists. Oh, those transgender folks. I mean, look, a lot of that is wrong. Amen. Oh, those white supremacists. They're just all upset because they're losing power. <laughs> Finally, they got their feelings hurt, the white folks. Finally. But it's like, if you focus on all that stuff, you're never going to fix your problem. Amen. It's so easy to get wrapped up. Just scrolling through your favorite social media of choice. What are you looking at? Nothing. I'm just trying to block out my problem. Quit trying to avoid your problem. Face your problem head on. Get some guts. Amen. Get some courage. Lay aside every weight. Get Hallelujah. rid of that thing that is Amen. so easily besetting you. Because if you don't, you're going to have a list that Satan is accruing in your heart of all your problems that you have with other people. And before you know it, the list will be too heavy for you to bear. Amen. You're going to have to learn how to cast all that. Cast all your cares to Yahweh. Amen. All, uh, whenever Jeremiah, whenever he backslid and left church, it didn't change me. It didn't change me. He, he got put out. I said, you can stay here and live right or you can leave. And it was that simple. Right? But also, we need to learn how to have some grace and compassion too. Amen. Whenever he came back, he wasn't following all the rules. He had the world in him now. Uh -huh. I had to let him back in my house with a whole with those ridiculous pink sunglasses, no skin tight pants, and the foolishness, the scarred face shirt, just the the worldliness. All he cared about was playing basketball. Hey. Come on back in, my son. You say you want to serve the Lord? Come on back in. Come on. Okay, it's service time. Let's go. Oh, they're late? Grace. Mercy. Amen. Forgiveness. Let him be here. Let, let, let him get reacquainted with Yahweh. So many people, I've seen them come. They said they're back, but they don't look back. Amen. Some of us are like, we're like Pharisees. We'll rebuke them back into the world. You don't have any sense when it comes down to being merciful. And w you can't win souls because you're not being wise. Amen. I, I, I'd be more, more than happy to do an assist with Apostle Washington. He gets to Mexico and, and Apostle Washington makes him change his phone number. Get rid, got it rid of all of his social media. Finally, his wife was allowed to dress him. He wouldn't have even went to Mexico if I hadn't been doing all this labor just to get him to Mexico. I'll, ta I'll take the assist. I love, I love setting Apostle Washington up for a layup because he, he's good at it. Apostle Washington can do things that you may not be able to do because of the respect and the rapport that he's built up. Amen? Amen. But if somebody doesn't honor you or respect you, you don't get all out of whack or out of line. Amen. 
you just you just do you work with what you can. Hallelujah. I've made up my mind that I'm going to strive to lay aside every weight. That means impatience, acting on your frustration Amen. all the time, all you breakers of things. You got a car, it has keys. You need them. Don't throw them. Ah! You got a phone, you need to make calls. Amen. Ah! <laughs> Just busting everything in your house, punching through walls, throwing fits. Amen. That's not helping anything. You can't do that. I don't do that. Yahweh has taught me to be patient. Amen. When I, when I, was, a, when I was a young parent, when your kids are young, we use this word, it's in the Bible, but nowadays it seems bad. You beat your kids. Amen. Beat them. <laughs> Not like abuse them. It just means you, 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 you spank them. You, you may even get a little switch. You whoop them. And that's a, that's a nicer way to say whip. That sounds bad too. <laughs> whip your kids. Amen. Beat them. With a rod even. That's what the Bible says. Hopefully it won't be like, you know, a metal lead pipe. Not, not that kind of rod. We're not talking about abusing your kids. These are just middle English words where they understood that meant discipline your children. You, you get them. You whip them. You yell at them. Sometimes you have to scream Amen. with kids. You get them to know where you mean business. And hopefully if you get that in the husband and the wife are both on one accord with it and they don't play uh, patty cake with the devil or take turns of being good parent, bad parent, and messing all that up, the kids will most often turn out all right. Amen. They will turn out all right. But if there's any miscommunication or, you know, one, the, one, of, the spout, one of the husband or the wife doesn't want you to beat the kids, and so they just keep saying, no, you're being too hard. And then... The other person to be a peacemaker won't whoop the kids because the other person and then that other person finally has a breakdown like a nervous mental breakdown and then tells them deal with these kids yeah. right Amen. if your child was raised up like that that's why your child is wild and out of control and doesn't have any structure Amen. and it's it's not easy to get those kids back on track Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but, and, and look, me, me and my wife had a relationship with that. I'm speaking with, from my experience. Yeah. I had to examine myself as to why my wife was telling me, you're being too hard on them. Because yeah. what if I was? Amen. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't just blow it off. Right. You know, you get too angry. But then maybe you could be getting too angry because you, because you wait until too late to deal with them, and now you're frustrated. So there's all kinds of angles and ways to look at it. At the end of the day, everybody's got their thought as a parent. The husband has the thought. The wife, ha wife has the thought. But it's time to realize that you've got to get this stuff under control because you're destroying your house. But as your kids get older, they're going to hit that age. I'm still talking about laying aside every weight. Yeah. I'm on topic. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're a parent and you got grown kids and you're still talking to them like they're 5, 10, yeah. right. 15, because you can still whoop your kids at that age. Amen. But as they get closer to around 18 years old, 16, 17, 18, you have to stop treating them like little kids Amen. and start treating them like grown folk. Amen. And you stop yelling at them. You stop threatening them. Amen. And you start treating them. You ha you're not going to act right. You're not going to follow my rules. Well, I'm going to have to treat you like I would any stranger I meet at the grocery store. Amen. I'm going to have to show you Yahshua Messiah, Amen. the Prince of Peace. I've done everything I can with you to raise you up in the Lord. Now, maybe you did a perfect job, and they still want to be a foolish child. 
at that point, you've got to learn how to say, you're, you're disobedient. You don't listen to any of my advice or anything I have to say. You won't follow my rules. I can't help you. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be a condoner. I'm not going to aid and abed a known sinner. And then you tell them, I'm sorry, it's your sins that have separated us in this family. We love you, but don't bring sin here. Amen. Keep it, it, you got to do that because if you keep on treating your kid like they're young, you're going to have, you are going to be the one that's full of anger, anxiety, frustration. And you're going to take it to your husband. You're going to take it to your wife. It's going to be all you want to talk about. Amen. It's going to ruin your marriage. Yeah. You got to realize the things that the Spirit is telling us to do. Hallelujah. You got to lay aside every single weight. Amen. If, if your brother or your sister, I'm talking about biological or even a friend in here, if they decide they want to leave the faith, you're going to have to lay aside every weight. Amen. You got to keep on serving the Lord, and you got to realize, well, we're not going to be able to have that friendship like we used to. Like with your brother, say so you're not going to lower the standard. I didn't lower the standard with my mom until her day of her death. I said, look, mom, I've told you, you don't have to keep the Sabbath and and not eat lobsters to be saved. You got to, because my mom believed that you got to keep the Old Testament laws. I said, then take all that. You know, but I mean, at least if you thought you had to keep those things to be saved, you'd think you'd do them. But she didn't. And my wife and my mom uh, had a really, really hard time getting along because they both were jealous of me. I think Yahweh, my, my, my wife and my mom resolved it Amen. at the end. Amen. But I, I held out. I'm going to do what's right to do no matter what. Amen? And I'm going to learn along the way because all the things that are in our life can bring frustration. But then you have to, you have to make no excuses to keep your frustration. You can't justify your frustration. Amen. Because if you justify your frustrations and your irritations, you'll keep them. If you justify all your fears, I'm afraid of dogs. I'm afraid of cars. I'm afraid of the highway. I'm afraid of the mountains. You'll keep every fear that you justify. Amen. But if you resist fear, if you rebuke fear, your life opens up and you stop always having, well, I can't do this and I can't do that and I can't go here and I can't go there and I can't let them into my house and, oh, nobody sleeps on my couch and I, I can't do this and I can't do that. If you... You gotta lay aside all these opinionations and your your thoughts of what you think you can't do. You'll be in trouble. Welfare was designed for your situation, but you got too much pride to go get some food stamps. Amen. It was designed for your social situation. You're not trying to abuse the city. Go get them food stamps and don't have any shame. Amen. And then whenever you don't need them anymore, quit getting them. I, I figured out a way where I can get quadruple the stamps. Yeah. Party time, everybody. I found out a way. I can get all the housing in the world. All you got to do is move all the people out of the house that's not supposed to be there. You can get a whole lot more money. Woo-hoo, party time. I figured I cracked the code. Not right for us to lie just to get gain. Amen. The spirit, and then, then when you do stuff like that, you won't have a, you won't have a um, pure conscience. Do you understand? So whenever we do wrong in any way, shape, form, or fashion, it's a weight. It's a sin. It burdens down our conscience. When you look at stuff on the phone, you're not supposed to be looking at. Amen. If you believe different things from what we teach. It weighs on you. Amen. And you'll eventually talk about it because you're not a very good jar. Amen. You're a leaky jar. Amen. Anytime we disagree with the Spirit, we got to talk about it eventually. Amen. Because we, 
get tired of feeling bad about disagreeing, so we seek out for someone to agree with us. So if you think that it's still okay to fight to defend yourself, you're gonna like, you're gonna fish. Try to find other people in the church who agree with you. And that's how divisions take place. Amen. Hallelujah. So we gotta work on that kind of stuff. We find ourselves saying a whole bunch of stuff we shouldn't say. We should never just justify it always. Because you're gonna talk. We all talk about what we think. The word goes forth without our permission, saints. The word goes forth without your permission. The word comes forth from the spirit of Yahweh, and you don't get a say on what's said. So what happens is you are in the state that you're in when the word hits you. And you, if you disagree with it, you will speak about it. And if you aren't examining yourself good enough, you will speak about it first before you think about it and say, you know what, I disagree with that, but I'm going to repent from my thought and I'm not going to speak. You see, you have an opportunity to hear the word. That's why you got to pay attention in church. Amen. Because if you're just not really listening in here, the word is going to hit you regardless. If you don't listen to what's being said, you won't even realize you disagree with it. You'll just kind of like psych yourself out that you are a good and faithful servant of the Lord. And you won't even meditate enough to say, you know what? I disagreed with that, but I'm not going to disagree with that. I repent, Yahweh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe what you just said. Hallelujah. If you don't follow those steps, the next step is you're going to defend yourself and you're going to do it out loud. First, you may do it inside, but eventually you're going to seek out a person to talk about it. And if you don't change, guess what's going to happen? If you sow the wind, you're going to reap the whirlwind. It's coming back at you. Your family will get ruined. You will lose your job. You, 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 you could get fired. Amen. Amen. You, you know, your wife may cheat on you. All because the Spirit told you how to treat her, but you just didn't do it. Amen. You had, you had the way that you wanted to do it. You wanted to be a easy husband like you know not really do what the spirit is telling you to do you want to take it be take a take it easy husband Hallelujah. and it all comes back to bite you right. be a take it easy wife a lazy wife a wife that won't clean a wife that won't cook a wife that tells husband no you know what i'm trying to say there's a time and a season for no but you know it's not all the times you think it is hey, mom. <laughs> But we should be tempered in that area anyway. Amen. So if you get told no, you can't flip, faint, and fall out. You got to say, okay, Yahweh, you're giving me an opportunity to not be sex crazy. Amen. This is for my good. Amen. Everything that happens to you is working together for your good. Amen. So you may not like it. You may get frustrated. But you better gird up the loins of your mind. <laughs> Pun intended. Get yourself right. Get your mind right. Amen. And all these things, we got to get our minds right. Amen. I don't know about you, but I would like a beacon to be in Lubbock. Amen. Amen. I don't want this place to get shut down because everybody is losing their spirit. Amen. Everybody's losing their heart. Amen. We got to grow in grace. What else does it say? And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Uh huh. Looking unto Yeshua the Messiah. Looking unto Yeshua Messiah. The author and finisher of our faith. The author. Now, the only reason we know anything about Yeshua is we got two sources. We have the scriptures and we have the apostles, the living ones. The scriptures, the New Testament was written by dead apostles. They're gone. But we have living ones now. Because just because it's written down doesn't mean you really understand it. Amen. These were wise apostles that wrote the New Testament. But you need living wise apostles to help you make sure you're not misinterpreting it. Amen. Amen. We need both of these elements. Holy Ghost filled living wise apostles. Amen. You're going to need this. 
Because look, all can't be said in one message. That's why you got to keep coming out. Keep coming out. Don't faint. And give a real ear. Amen. I mean, my time is, is almost up. You're going to have to give a sincere ear, y'all. Because if you're quiet, you're just going to stay quiet forever. Amen. No matter how many times the Spirit says, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Yes, Praise me. Give, give me the glory that's due to my name. Quit being shy, ashamed. Hallelujah. If you'll be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Amen. And you can hear that and hear that, and you'll just stay quiet. Amen. If you talk too much, the Spirit can tell you a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. And there's so many scriptures about foolish people. A prating fool shall fall, you know. And you know, you're a terror to your own house. Or, and all these people who can't control their spirit. And you'll hear it and you'll hear it and you'll hear it. But you're not applying it to your life. But you've got to apply it to your life. Amen. It'll cause a great change. We got people who are getting raped out in the streets now. Amen. But, but they won't. But all they needed was some help with how to dress and where to be. Amen. And they, would, they wouldn't have got raped. We got dead people got murdered. But if, if, all we would, if they would have got a little help on how to talk and how to show respect and how not to be in certain places, they would still be alive right now. Amen. We got homes that are wrecked, husbands and wives, divorced, remarried and remarried and remarried. But if they would have just come to church and heard this message and exercised some patience, yeah. don't, don't marry the, the first warm body you see. Wait for somebody who's showing faithfulness and Amen. good fruits. Pray to Yahweh to give you patience and not be led by your flesh and your lust. Amen. Then you would wait to find a faithful brother and a sister. Yeah. And say, well, I would prefer since this is a very serious thing. Oh, you, you won't get a tattoo, right? They say that's too permanent, right? But you, you just marry somebody. and just Because you think, oh, I can divorce them. That's how it is nowadays. Amen. I'll just marry them. I'll divorce them. Ain't no biggie. I'll try them out. Give them a test. Test run. Try them out for size, you know. We got all, all kinds of people making horrible decisions. Amen. Thinking they got to dress all sexy, thinking that that's how they're going to catch the right person. That's how you're going to catch the wrong person. You put on your tight pants and you caught that man. Amen. And then the next lady, she put on some tight pants too. And she caught him. You don't want to also, too. <laughs> and you don't want that in your life. You want a holy man who's faithful, who's not, who's not going to be influenced by some tight pants. Amen. Somebody who's influenced by a good and faithful, righteous spirit. Amen. And that's who you want to marry. Right? Amen. But I thank Yahweh for the words that were given to me today. Let's be strong. Let's stay in tune with the spirit. Keep praying for our leaders. Uh, keep looking on uh, Marco Polo, using all of the uh, things that we have to keep us encouraged. Call somebody you haven't called in a long time. Amen. Amen. Go on that concentration that you might have been putting off. Amen. If you feel it in, in yourself that you know you can be better and you know you can be stronger, go on a concentration. Don't wait on anybody else to do it for you Amen. or to do it with you. Right. Amen. Amen. And continue to pray for your brothers and your sisters that we can all uh, come up to be what Yahweh's calling for us to be. I thank Yahweh for all of you. It's good to be here in Lubbock. And pray for me at, at, and uh, Deacon Jenkins as we make our safe trip back. I think he's going tomorrow, but I'm, I'm leaving today. Love y'all. Yahweh bless. At this time, I'm going to turn service over into the hands of Teacher Pecone. Let's receive him by saying praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh, saints. Y'all may be seated. Thank y'all for the words that come forth from our beloved.